how I use Python as a data analyst, everything from data cleaning, EDA, visualization, and more. Stay tuned. First, we'll start with the platform for accessing Python. Here, I like to use Jupyter Notebook in my role. We can also use its online counterpart with Google Collab, the online and collaborative environment for Python. What I'll do here is once I've got it installed and follow other tutorials online for that, I'll just type in Jupyter Notebook and then we'll have open our environment. Next, I'd load in a data set which I'd gathered from a SQL server or otherwise perhaps web scraped from the internet. I'd import the necessary libraries and begin the EDA, the exploratory data analysis and cleaning. Now that we have this data set and I've reviewed an analysis of this live in my previous video, we'll explore it. I'll do that using pandas, such as the dot head method, showing us the first five rows and all the different columns. I could delve deeper into this with df.info. Here, I can see the number of null values data types. I could also look at the number of rows with df.shape. In a few simple steps, I know the size of this data set. I can see the first few rows, all the columns, all the data types and null values. This took but a few seconds and is why Python is so adept at analysis. Next, we'll do data cleaning. I could rename some of the columns or sample down the size of my data set to just a few columns. I could even remove duplicate rows. We can then do some more with some group buys and then get into some visualizations. Let's show that here. Now I can see again very quickly the average age, the mean for both gender, showing that not only very slightly, but men are typically older on average. We could also look at the min or the max or otherwise, and again, see that these are very similar. Something that might not be so similar might be the average amount spent or the number of previous purchases. Let's take a look here. Gender by previous purchases, and we'll look at the mean. Let's get to some quick visualizations. Again, I've explored this data set in particular and all the steps in depth in my last tutorial showing us that there are more males than females. If I did want to check that, again, I could type it out like this. The next main thing I'd use Python for is machine learning. You could see on screen here some examples which I've done in the past. So I can look at the number of sales, projecting that forwards, look at what factors influence it with linear regression and logistic for binary classification. This isn't something it's a data analyst I do every day, or really at all. It's more of a data scientist role, but it's something I do for my own personal interest, and there are many different courses you can take to help learn that. So we've covered what you can do, or what at least I do in Python, exploratory data analysis, data cleaning, and so forth, but why? Well, for a few reasons. It's very quick. We can see here how long it took to load each of these things. Not long at all. The other reason you use it is because it's entirely free. It's easily shareable. I could copy all this code. I could check it with other people. If it's Google Collab, we can do that together online. I could print it, download it as a notebook and share it with you, as I've done previously. And that's why I believe Python is a fantastic, effective tool for data analysis. And this is how I use it. All the best.